You just tuned in to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Okay, today we got a great giveaway for you. Here's how you can enter to win this awesome prize. Oh, you want to see what the prize is? Here it is. It's a mirror flask. Look at this. This stores fluids for you. Fluids, I said. You can put water, soup, whatever you want in there. Keeps it hot or All cold. Fluids. Looks really good. And also, look what it says on it. Fitness and freedom, because here at Mind Pump, we believe in both fitness and freedom. So if you win this contest, we'll send this right to your door. All right, here's how you can enter into the contest. First, go to mindpumpfree.com and download one of our free guides. Then in the comments, tell us the guide that you downloaded and why you downloaded that guide. And if you do that in the first 24 hours and Doug Pitts picks your comment as the best one, we'll send you that mirror cup for free. Isn't that easy? That's cool. Also, turn on your notifications and subscribe to this channel. We give away stuff all the time. You're going to want to know when we post uh, these podcasts. Um, also, one more thing before we start this podcast. We are running a promotion on two individual programs, workout programs, and a bundle. A bundle is where we combine multiple programs together. The first program that's on sale is MAPS HIT. That's high-intensity interval training. The second one is MAPS SPLIT. This is an advanced bodybuilding workout. And then the bundle is the bikini bundle. All of them are 50% off. Huge, huge sale. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code SPRINGBREAK. All right, enjoy the show. Dude, I was reading um, some articles about the future of tech okay. over the weekend. There's a, a whole like segment of technology called sex tech. What? Yeah, so this is like technology for sex stuff pleasure yeah and um so scientists are there's actually some scientists that are working on like devices machines. where you can implant an electrode near the spine and then you have uh an orgasm button whoa so you could just push the button and just uh. have an orgasm and it's for people with like you know uh, spinal injuries and stuff like that Dude, oh yeah, but I'm, I'm sure people. <laughs> I'm sure other people are going to use that. That sounds messy. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Could you imagine having? Because and does it does it keep working? Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't. <laughs> well, did you guys? Do you remember when we went and uh, we went and interviewed Sex with Emily? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever? I so I I got the one. I think it was called the We Vibe. Oh, you guys picked the stupid uh, yeah. toys. I got that too. Yeah, yeah. Those, those were dumb toys. No, I. What do you mean? So You're, the the idea is that you. bro, I know I, I know you guys got stupid toys. I got the the. It's called the Womanizer, which is a stupid name. Yeah. Read the reviews on that. Your wives are so they poor ladies. They have no idea. <laughs> you guys got the dumb toys. This guy's the toy master. The, 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 wom the Womanizer. It will. It makes. It just does crazy stuff. Well, what is it? So it's a. It's a small. It's like there's a little suction device on it. Okay. And it 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 does this rapid fire suction with vibration. And so what a woman does is she puts it on her her clitoris. Yeah. And um, it's uh, just just orgasm central wow. is what ends up happening <laughs> wow so the we vibe one that i had she i'm supposed to be like control it remotely yeah mm -hmm. so the idea of it is really cool but it never really was executed yeah. well D yeah. didn't really pan out yeah it sounds like i it, knew it too when you guys were when she's like hey pick well, whatever toy you want from the closet and she then, was selling it hard you though. guys picked those and i was like uh, whatever well she was selling it, i'll get it, this one over here yeah. i'm like i could do this by an app yeah, you know, remotely. But That's what I thought. Got too. you. Imagine an orgasm button, though. Like it's a, it's an electrode on your spine. First of all, it, this would be. I feel like, oh uh, my god, you, the the practical jokes, right? Like, <laughs> let's say when you guys had it, one hundred percent. I would find a way to get your your to hack it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And while we're hanging out, I'd just be like, da, 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 yeah. da. oh you, god. You got some big speech. You <laughs> yeah. know, like your Is it, <laughs> both? You're, you're hanging out with your parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> both sexes too? Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, it would work on apparently, wow. I guess. That's interesting. I know. In fact, this led me down a rabbit hole. There was this woman who had this disorder of multiple some sort. Yeah. She, to what? Sorry. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Led you down multiple holes. That's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. No, this 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 woman had this disorder where every time she sneezed, she orgasmed. There was like a cross fire some, oh, I've somehow. Oh, I've heard of this, yeah. yeah. And so every time she would sneeze, she would have an orgasm. And then mm -hmm. there's people who have, I can't remember the name of the disorder, 
but they just all day they can't control it's actually torture for these poor people they're just tortured by it yeah i saw that it was on uh, that show taboo there's also the uh, orgasmic birth which i've never believed oh my god that's gotta be a myth that's gotta be worse things that's huh there's gotta be worse things than being than orgasm all day uh uh, i mean think about it dude you can't do anything right now you're just just, i know but there's got to be worse things than that right i mean there's, there's a lot worse than if you got stuck with a condition i feel like that would be i'm sure yeah but it's i'm sure it's exhausting and you probably feel weird you're hanging out with whoever you're hanging out it doesn't matter you're orgasming yeah. So you're talking to Doug and you orgasm. You hang out with Justin, <laughs> orgasm. So confusing. No yeah. breaks? Go to your grandma's house, orgasm. No yeah. breaks? No, that's what this condition was, right? Yeah. Yeah. There has to be somewhat of a break. They no. Have to sleep. She, only when you sleep. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like you wake up and it's orgasms all day. Just throughout the day. I don't yeah. believe that. That's all. It was on the show. It's like a muscle spasm. So it must be like, true. Uh huh. <laughs> so no, that's it's a your real defense. Thing. It was on the show. No, there's a. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, okay, it's a real so condition. No, yeah, I I'm it. with you, Sal. No, there's a, a there's a name condition. for it. There's an actual name for the condition. Maybe Doug can find out what <clears throat> the uh, the name of that condition is. It's just like one of those things where you you think it's gonna be awesome, and then like if you're you're always in that state, it just makes it hell. Oh yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of like movies where people get like a wish, but it's an evil genie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you're like, oh, I, uh, I'd, lo- ooh, I'd love to have like orgasms all the time. So yeah. like, okay, here you go. Yeah. And yeah. you're just tortured. All day long. What's it called there? Persistent genital arousal disorder mm. is a phenomenon in which afflicted women experience spontaneous genital arousal. Oh, so it's just women. Unresolved. I believe so. Unre- mm. See, men have a very strong refractory period post-orgasm. That's why women can have multiple orgasms. Yeah, imagine how tired you'd be all day if that was okay. <laughs> so <laughs> drained. <laughs> <laughs> you look like, hey, ah. hey, 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 what was the Indiana his Jones? Eyes all sunk in. Just, oh. <laughs> was it on Indiana Jones with that yeah. one guy like he shrinks yeah. up and shrivels? Oh, <laughs> that, yeah. that would be you. Turn into a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Adam, obviously, he looks like he's 70. Yeah. Man, he needs some fluids. <laughs> Rub some lotion on him or something. He looks yeah, like he's all constantly dried up. drinking water. Yeah, look at this. The current case is a 40 year old female who experienced such orgasms for about a month. Wow. <laughs> a whole month. You can't get anything done? No. Man, that's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Anyway, more cool uh, articles. That was a cool one, but I read yeah, another one. It is interesting. This one's really fascinating. So they did this study, this kind of big study, and obviously people are getting fatter. It's happening all over the world. And the explanations for this rise in obesity is increase in calories and decrease in activity. And that's been the explanation. But we're also seeing an increase in obesity among animals. So first they said, okay, pets, well, that makes sense. Uh, they're eating more scraps off the table. Yeah. The behaviors of people, their their pets tend to match. Of course. So if, you, if you're, you know, and this is true, uh, fat people tend to have fat pets and whatever, right? Just like your kids. It's not genetic. It's more of a behavior thing or sure. whatever. But then they went a step further. Like wild animals too. Animals do? in 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 zoos who have uh, the same activity level all the time, mm. measured f- food intake all the time. There's like a a significant increase in obesity among animals in the zoo. Yeah, but that's still not that's terrible. I mean, you, there's still humans that are controlling the feeding of that. That's what I'm saying, and they're what they're saying, and it's very structured. Like zoos are very very uh, meticulous about mm-hmm. how much they feed animals and. How much activity they have? I don't know. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It's the same as like the the Chipotle guy who scoops my fucking meat and beans. Like they, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No, hey, if you talk to Chipotle, they would tell you this is a, a half a scoop no. equals X amount of calories. No, in it. It's a but, heavy-handed guy. Yeah, exactly. But a one hundred percent, and I know you guys can attest to this. When you go to Chipotle. It's very inconsistent it's way, on what you. It's no, very, so you can't tell me some zookeeper who makes minimum wage is like, oh, they, this is protocol. Oh we God. have to do one scoop of corn. They don't That's make a, minimum. No, it doesn't work like that. We're not whatever. talking about, <laughs> bro. This isn't that tiger guy, the Tiger King. No, these yeah, are real. These are, real. These are like no, real I, zoos, San Diego zoos. zoos. Yes. I'm calling yeah. bullshit on your study. No, I'll, <laughs> it's going to be in the show notes so people can read it. No, they <laughs> literally won't. They met. They're very meticulous. They measure the food, but, the energy, everything. Stop it, dude. Really. That's what they th- But they're confined too, like so activity wise. That's what they say. Okay. okay, so if you were to ask, like I said, Chipotle, you know, as a franchise, do do you guys have rules? I don't think I think Chipotle is you- way looser. Than, than, the, than the zoo <laughs> really taking care of well, their all animals. All I got to do is say, hey, man, can I get some more? 
And then he does. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, dude. Yeah, there's, all it takes is a, a zookeeper guy who likes the, the rhino a lot, and uh, so he gives a little love. That's not how it works. <laughs> the tiger just winks at him What do you mean it's not how it bit. works? Yeah. You think it's like auto-feed? No, you think he they likes have, me. You think they have like a measuring yeah. thing that gives them this exactly the secret. same thing? Well, it's controlled, and I can tell you what they said in the study, because these are controlled feedings, and there's a Here's signific- Simba. Here's a little more. <laughs> you know, don't tell anybody. Yeah, you, <laughs> say, you know <laughs> And a lot of these zoos, you could go to the little thing and you could you could pay 25 cents and get the little treats and That's throw it to That's just for them. the sheep and the llamas. Uh. <laughs> you can't do that for the bears and the, and the tigers and the uh, and the expensive animals. Are they accounting for the popcorn I'm, I'm, you know, yes. that makes its way in there? Right, yeah. dude. I'm poking holes in your <laughs> no, study, <dude>. bro. <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, those, exp- those are expensive-ass animals, and those zoo- those are people are scientists. Yeah. They're not just like, you think it's like, science? <laughs> the scientists are not feeding the fucking rhinos, dude. That's not what's going on. Anyway, yeah. so this was a study. Okay. said, Adam. All right. It says... Justin, whose side do you want on this? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of... <laughs> you I'm have to take... Of, hey, there's three of us. You have to take a side when things like this happen on this show. I mean, there's there's scientists involved, but I like your theory. Yeah, I thank do. you, Justin. I, I like it, yeah. but it's not true. God it's damn. enough It's yeah. enough to poke holes just, in his study. Justin's just, just, just It's a, a funny theory, and that's what I like. Yeah. Just as a politician. I, here's what I like about what you're saying, Adam, and here's what I like about what Sal said. Yeah. <laughs> no definitive. See? Yeah, you'd get nothing out of no, that. No, so what the study said is they think that the that chemical, the chemicals that are that were everybody's being exposed to, including animals, these in, <laughs> endocrine disrupting chemicals. Did I say that right this time? Doug? No, I never say it right. <clears throat> endocrine, endocrine, endocrine disrupting chemicals, uh, xenoestrogens are causing everything to get fatter. Wow, and that's one of the reasons why they think this is happening. Really? So yeah. So it's not the chipotle. And it's making its way in the meat. <laughs> I'm going with the chipotle theory it's because they're just exposed. Chemicals, pollution, plastics, oh. like everything. Wow. And so everybody's making that much of an impact. I just, I'm just picturing a zookeeper. <laughs> He's got a scooper. You know, He's got a little, a little extra for you today. Yeah, yeah fluffy. <laughs> yeah. See, I thought you were gonna go more in the direction of you know how like bears and like wild animals they find their way towards people yeah. like visiting and then they go through the dumpsters and you know eat a bunch of shit. And that's how they're getting fat. Yeah, no, no. They were talking about zoo animals, which I thought was fascinating because zoo animals they're controlled. Yeah, you know, if you if you talk, kind of okay. So what kind you, of <laughs> you ever talked to you ever talked to Suspect. people that work at a zoo? Sure, you have. Yeah, you're such a liar. You're, right you're going to get a lot of messages. Buddy. You've never yeah, talked to anybody at the zoo. I took my job seriously. I know there's going to be some kid who does that. He said minimum yeah, wage zoologist. Yeah, <laughs> I'm nothing like a Chipotle. No, wait, wait, bro, you can't. Okay, listen. There's there's definitely Definitely some probably very brilliant people that work at the zoo. So I'm not, I'm, I know I insulted everybody that works at the <laughs> zoo, right? So, okay, listen, there's probably some really. <laughs> so really backtrack. Right yeah, let me backpedal. Let me backpedal a little bit right here. I don't want my fucking DMs flooded with people that are no. insulted by their, their education, that their formal education they went through to work at the zoo. Listen, right. there's definitely people there that are very smart. They're probably controlling these things. But you cannot tell me the job of the person that goes around every morning or twice a day and feeds a lot of these animals, okay, are. The scientist. That's not who's doing that. Come on. Uh, well, I mean, it's so it, this is it's very. That wouldn't be very cost effective. It's look. It's this is one of their one of the top theories because they're trying to figure it out. Because look, I've talked to people who work in zoos. Okay, I actually have. Yes, I have you got a lot of zoo friends. <laughs> yeah, huh? You got a lot yeah, of zoo friends. Dinner all the time. No, dude. I, I, it's a fa- I think it's fascinating, and <laughs> and they they literally measure and weigh. We feed. The lions, you know, exactly you know, three pounds of red meat and two pounds of this and whatever. Yeah, well, no, but that goes. Well, back- yeah, they monitor their weight and their health like constantly. But yeah, it's uh, I don't know, dude. I honestly, it's there's there's a lot of people that really take this seriously, like yeah. scientifically. Anyway, yeah. anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I like the theory though. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's fun. Well, in the same article, they yeah. were saying how animals in the wild are getting fatter. But see, that could be explained away too, like you said, Justin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, there's a lot of fat people camping. Yes, or they, they were their- saying that. Uh, that rural uh, rats were getting fatter. Again, I could explain that away too. Right. You know, because there's more shit and food left everywhere. So, uh, but look, it is interesting, you know, because then you have the the other stuff that's happening, which is like testosterone levels of males uh, dropping considerably. You're seeing well, you hormone think, changes in children. Right. You got to consider that too in terms of like being cooped up and like only having like so much uh, space available <laughs> to like that's got to do something to your hormones as well, right? I don't know. What don't about know. that too? Like what about the, the size of these these pens for over the course of the last 30 years for zoos too? Yeah. Have, they, have they reduced the size of what the Well, I know San Diego is, is like one of the best <laughs> because, whoa, I just did something. I spilled yeah, that. you just spilled my, a bunch. <laughs> you just, you just, you just 
keeps it's dropping totally, more shit. Totally over there. It's fine, Doug. Don't worry. <laughs> it's okay, he got all crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's the best because of it has so much open space and uh, you know less like fences and things. So mm, yeah. yeah, you know, I used to like zoos, uh, and then uh, Jessica ruined it for me. Why? So now, because she's she's like I'm she I because I've tried I've talked or tried to talk her. I love zoos. I love seeing big zoo guy animal. I'm yeah. a big zoo guy, right? <laughs> yeah. I like seeing animals. I think it's fascinating. But she made me feel real bad because she's like, she goes, I, I, I'm not supposed to be able to see a polar bear or a lion or a tiger here in San Diego or whatever. She goes, it's weird. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're captive and this and that. And of course, I do the whole like, oh, but they're taken care of and they donate so, money, so much money to help, you know, preserve, you know, these animals, this and that. And she goes, no, it's still not, you know, whatever. And she's, I mean, does, she's, I mean she makes good points. So I'm not going to zoos anymore. Oh, that just really? Yeah. Or really, well, she's not going to go to a zoo? That no. documentary came out. What was it? Blackfish about yeah. the, that whole thing and uh, yeah, and like uh, Sea World and all that. It kind of ruined it for me a bit. But yeah, I mean, it's it, it isn't natural. It's not their natural environment. No. But also too, like how else are, you, are a lot of people going to be able to see these animals? Yeah. They're not going to go in safaris. And what, and what's, and <laughs> just what, it's like what, you got to weigh it out. He's yeah, like, yeah, you got to weigh animals in captivity. Right. And you know, humans' enjoyment. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> entertaining. Well, what about the survival rate, though? Like, so I understand, like the whale theory. That one's terrible, right? Whales are used to. I mean, they have like the most. They have the most area to roam than anybody. Mm -hmm. Then they can put in these little fucking pools. Like that's yeah. pretty ridiculous, yeah. right? And they live pretty long, don't they? I don't know. You don't know that? No. Big zoo guy, but you don't know how long whales live. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's yeah. okay. I'm not a, a lot of lies coming out of you today. I feel <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, but I mean, but uh, yeah, what's the survival rate of like a? They a, live longer in captivity, obviously. Right. Yeah, I know that, but I mean. Would you let me ask and you? And you get filet mignon for dinner almost every night? Bro, like, come on. Yeah, but think about it this way. You as a human, if I put you in this big ass cage with lots of whatever you want, would feed you all the time, you watch TV, you just can't leave. Yeah. And oh, but don't worry, you'll live, you know, ten years long. Would you want to do it? Well, no. you have a conscious different, right? So yeah. you think about stuff like that where their their whole their whole purpose is to survive. Yeah. Right? Is to eat and survive. I don't and, know. And they're gonna eat and survive longer than they, I don't know. You know, again, it's, you could argue it either way. Yeah, look like. at that. Well, Blue whales live to their ninety. Yeah, so that's kinda you're ninety years out in the ocean on your own and then you get stuck in a I don't a think pool. they put a blue whale in the ocean. Did in a, you see the, No killer whales? That, what, how long um, is killer whale? 29 years. Oh, okay. By the way, have you seen Killer Whales Hunt? Have you watched documentaries on them? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're my. super smart. Bro, there there was a seal on a floating iceberg, yeah. just safe. From they, the, they created a massive yeah, wave to knock they them off. They swim up yeah. and they, they the wave knocks them off. They, they do stuff like that all the time oh. to, to, to pin animals. It's it's pretty fascinating. Oh, yeah. They're really smart. Did you see, too, like, uh, so um, octopuses, like, they've- Octopi. Well, whatever. I like saying pusses because it's more <laughs> Okay. Okay. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Go I, with it. Go with it. I see it. Go with it, Justin. I'm with uh, it. Yeah. So the pusses, um, they, <laughs> <laughs> the scientists have, have uh, basically determined that they're from outer space. No, <laughs> I'm serious. What the hell did they I'm, call that? I'm serious. They think that they're they're aliens that made their way to Earth like thousands of years. You ago. know what I hate about that? I'm like, come on, really? You know what I hate about that? This yeah. is what I hate. I hate it when scientists, when whenever we don't know, check yeah. check me on that. Doug. That's I'm the serious. thing. Right, yeah, we make a leap. Hmm, yeah, I don't know how this was made. It <laughs> must be aliens, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they think it, that it, uh, that octo octopi or octo yeah the uh, yeah the octopuses they can um, <laughs> they can change their they can alter their DNA. There's all kinds of like weird like traits that they have that they aren't just jellyfish feel crazier. Are they weirder? Aren't they? What is as jellyfish? Don't they jellyfish. live? They live longer and they're more. We can't explain more about them than the octopus. I don't right? know. Where yeah, you there's some of them. No, yeah. some some uh, mm. yeah some jellyfish you just live. Make up or what? They're almost no, don't jellyfish live jelly forever. Yeah, almost. right. Some of them. Yeah, jellyfish live like for a long ass. Like time. they don't die of of eight, of old age. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. I do remember remember that yeah so with octopus i know where you Come got this guy. from this is from graham hancock right is that where you is read it this? yeah it might be but I, yeah there's something else from graham hancock i wanted to bring up they were so saying is, they were saying there you that, go wow <laughs> a scientific paper hey, it says claims, octopuses too justin yeah uh, wow Sal. see it is the pusses <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to correct me they come it's, from outer space i like the short yeah. just pusses yeah a scientific paper claims that these <clears throat> wondrously smart undersea animals are actually aliens Brought to Earth by meteors. Meteor travelers. Hello. Mm, I don't know. They don't survive very long outside of the water. 
<laughs> I mean, so, it's a working theory. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just did some tests and they determined that they feel pain and that they get that they they have emotions surrounding pain, which I think is kind of a yeah, well. They're, they're super smart. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Didn't he cover that in that documentary that you talked about, Justin? What's that documentary that that's out on Netflix oh, right now? Oh, the one with the guy who the fought weird, his friend. Yeah, yeah, the weird dude. That oh yeah, the friend of the octopus. Yeah, yeah. That was a, actually really fascinating. Yeah, because it, it it was really like the only time they've had insight on the behavior of how they interact. Uh, right. Yeah. And so he actually like immersed himself every day and filmed and documented, you know, interacting with this like octopus. And it was like pretty, pretty trippy. Have like, you, have you seen them uh, escape? You ever seen videos of them escaping like a jar? Or, yeah. I mean, they're, they're really smart. Yeah. They figure their way around all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Do you guys like eating octopus? <sighs> yes. No. Yeah. I, mean, I love it. Yeah. Really? yeah I knew you, I knew you wouldn't. Well, yeah, and it's, yeah. <laughs> chicken fingers. Here it comes. Yeah. Here comes a joke. Here yeah. comes the chicken yeah. fingers yeah. joke. No, no, no. <laughs> the audience should know that anytime we go to like a, a seafood restaurant he, or sushi. He orders off the kid's menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always tease Justice. We'll have, I'll have Do you guys have corn dogs chicken, chicken or nuggets? chicken fingers? Chicken nuggy. <laughs> Please. You got some chicken nuggets? Did you get my friend a coloring book too, actually? <laughs> just as all. I like fish. It tastes better. He's got like, you know, fish sticks. Yeah. <laughs> With tartar sauce. Oh. Anyway, that's interesting. All right, you guys ready for some some uh, controversial stuff? Oh, please, bro. Oh, it's controversial it. time. All right, so uh, this I actually looked this up. This is a real. These are real statistics um, that uh, are a bit controversial, but they're real. And I just saw Michaela Peterson. She had uh, her dad Jordan Peterson on the podcast, and they yeah. talked about this. This is a legit thing. So for every sixteen points above a hundred on IQ tests, so for every 16 additional IQ points above 100 mm -hmm. that a woman has, she has a 40% reduction in her odds or probabilities of getting married. For a man, wow. every 16 wait, points- Wait, wait, wait. wait. So the smarter she yeah. gets, the less, the less likely, likely she to get, get married? married? Big time. Wow. What does that say about us? For, hold on a second. For a man- <laughs> We're a little fragile. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know, right? <laughs> Our egos are- And is that like- is that, can't handle that. Is that like uh, across generations or is that just t right now? Do it's you know? just- it, This is just the, the when they studied for long periods of time, this is what they find. Okay. For men, every 16 points above 100 that a man goes up in IQ, he's, he has a 35% increase increase in likelihood of getting married. So it's, it explains we mm. need them. Is yeah. what you're saying. Well, no, so what what they're what the, and this they is don't what, need us. And this is what the science <laughs> this is what the science says. The science says it's because uh women tend to be attracted to men that are they, they want to be with a man that's smarter, whereas men tend to want to be with oh, a woman. Oh, so as they get smarter, the, uh, it, it thins the herd a little it bit. It does. Oh, okay. So if they're really, really smart, they're too smart for then, most men. Then and they're finding they, they're looking for a man that's so smarter than them. It's harder for smarter women to find uh, equally or, or greater uh, uh, smarter men. I mean, I, yeah. I totally because I subscribe to that. Think of your clients. So I've trained a lot of really yeah. like brilliant women that were CEOs, VPs, and single. stuff like that. And yeah, single. Yeah, same and, and always like you know complaining to me. God, Adam, I can't find anybody. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. It is right now. What's so controversial about that? Well, it's just controversial because it says like, is it because you know, uh, is who's, it getting, who's getting mad about that? Guys, we're getting mad because we sound stupid, right? Uh, no, mm. guy, no. I think it's oh. because it, to some people it sounds like, oh, uh, does that mean that that uh, women uh, they they have to be with someone smarter, or is it because guys are scared to be with someone that's smarter than them or whatever? So it's, it causes a lot of. Relatively controversial uh, conversations, but I do think it's fascinating. Yeah. I do think it's very, very interesting. And you know, it's funny. Was it you, Adam, that sent me that? Uh, was it that article that talked? Or no, no, it was that book that talked about how we like to. We always try to go towards the mean. Mm. Was it yeah. that book that you were showing? What book? I mean, it was the I've one you played you a in lot. Here. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say I played a lot of books for you. Yeah, thinking fast and slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like with height, right? Uh, women tend to want to be with men taller. Men tend to want to be with women shorter. And yeah. their children tend to be, if they're if if they're if the man is extremely tall, the children tend to be a little bit more average or yeah, whatever. Reduction to the mean. Yes, reduction to the mean. Yeah. So I wonder if it has to do with that with intelligence, where mm -hmm. you know, one wants one smarter, one wants one dumber. And it yeah, you know what? I actually think I read this somewhere. That's actually yeah. yeah. I I think yeah, you're exactly be. right. No, that's uh, that's really interesting. I just don't see why that's controversial, though. Yeah. I don't see where yeah. where someone's going to be I, in a, a... I do think it's funny, though, when people say... I guess I could see how some men would be intimidated because there's that whole, like, I need to be the guy thing. I would that, I, Opposite for me. I think it, uh, intelligence is extremely attractive. Yeah. It's like my number one turn on. Yeah. Really? For sure. Absolutely. We're always trying to generalize, uh, you know, human behaviors and, like, try and, like, 
put it in categories and and and, and, and hope that it like keeps playing out like that. But it's mm-hmm. like all over the place. Yeah, yeah there's too many other variables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Well, that's just like the what's, I, I I bring this. I brought it up before. What's the study thing like you, to duplicate a study? Is like especially so, behavioral studies. Yes, yeah. yeah like yeah. a majority of them, they try to duplicate them, and it just doesn't goes out well, the window. True yeah. science is 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 going in to prove it wrong every time. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, yeah, you're right. It, it, that's not the the mentality. Isn't to to prove your your hypothesis. It's to see if you can uh, you know duplicate it, or if it doesn't. You know, like if you're, if you're going through that again to see if it fails. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like we become this society too that leans so heavily though on like studies. Oh, this study said this. It's so easy. And then to, we throw out yeah, common sense. Yeah. And then, exactly. For, yeah, common sense or, or stuff that we've seen for years and years and years, right? It's fun. It's funny to me that, and when you look at, actually research how consistent studies really are, they're very inconsistent. And you're actually, I, I, so I'll, I'll go in another direction with that. Um, so the CDC just came out and said that uh, fully vaccinated people now can gather indoors, no problem, but they still say everybody should wear uh, masks in public. And and so it was on a it was on a page on uh, on Instagram. And so of course I you know I do my thing. I leave my controversial comment and get just blasted. I mean, just, can we just think about that for a second? Yeah. Like oh yeah. How ridiculous that sounds. Well, I was just gonna say this is the common sense versus study thing, right? So studies will show that if people wear masks, there's gonna be less infections. But we completely ignore the common sense that says that. And by the way, science supports this as well. That people need to see other people's faces. We're social creatures. In mm-hmm. fact, a big part of our brain is dedicated to reading faces. This is why yep. humans can make faces out of almost anything. You can look at a car and you can see a face. You can look at a toaster and see a face. It's a, it's a, it's a big part of who we are. And the intricacies of reading people's emotions and faces mm-hmm. is a very important part of our social health. And we're not considering that. It's all about infection rates. And they're not considering, like, what is the potential damage of forcing, especially children, to wear masks all the time around each other. There's a there's a trade off. It's not a zero. It's not zero trade off. There's some trade off. Yeah. What I, I thought I seen we were at like record highs right now, aren't we? What's for what? Yeah, for the COVID deaths right now. Where are we? No, at? no, no. Are we going low. down? Yeah, big time. We've been uh, going down even, for a while yeah. now. Uh, well, well, tell me. Give me. I, I'm not paying attention to this stuff anymore. And I know you're still. So once the election happened, I'm over it. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm so over this. Shit. It's like the. Uh, Again, I always give the analogy like sports. It's like the Super Bowl is over. I don't care anymore. And yeah, I don't care anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about football all fucking yeah, off season. Wait till next season. But yeah, I mean, I expect nerdy guys like you that like politics stuff to yeah. still be keeping me informed on all this stuff. So to, I mean, break it down. It's to going. Me. It's way down in the U.S. The the cases have come down significantly. Um, in California, they've come down quite a bit. So it's. I mean, good news. There's good news. Is it's coming down quite a bit. So we're on a downtrend. Right now, uh, does does that mean it can switch and reverse? I don't know. Now, what about Lots state of- by state? Because now we're starting to see that what we see: Texas, Mississippi, Florida. We've got a handful mm-hmm. of these states that are like full on open up, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, are we comparing like those to what's going well, on? I find it interesting. Was it Florida was has been pretty much open since, since like August? August? Yeah. yeah, and they have the the highest uh, percentage of population of like elderly people. They there. do. They're a very old population, right? So you'd think that if if all you know played out the way that the media has been portraying it like there'd be a lot well, of deaths i was just talking to jessica about this the other day the brilliance in uh, in some of the ways that our government was initially set up and in the brilliance of states states have powers that the federal government doesn't now the federal government has grown in power uh over, just you know exponentially over the last you know i don't know you know 10 decades or whatever but the states still have quite a bit of power and in in the way our government is designed some states can say no masks or you have to wear a mask and it's we don't have a federal mandate and if we did it'd be so hard to uh to incur to what's the word you know make sure everybody was doing stuff right from a federal standpoint you couldn't necessarily do that so what's good about that well what's great is that we can compare yeah so we can literally in 5 years look back and say all right Texas Florida California they're they're all big states they've got metropolitan areas they're similar enough to where we can compare them. Mm-hmm. California still has their mask mandates. Uh, Florida and Texas don't. Let's compare them and see. What now, the is difference there a counter? Is. There's got to be a counter argument to that right now, right? What what's, what's the argument to that? Otherwise, everybody would open up, right? If you have places like Florida that it's not going, it's not. Well, the, or the argument is by revert by, re, by opening up, you're going to cause another spike in infections. Yeah. that's the argument. So that so that again, so that this is it's a waiting game right now. It's yeah. okay. Let's see what happens in these states in the next five six months, right? And then and then we'll make our prediction, right? But people, a lot of people are getting vaccinated, and then Johnson and Johnson's vaccine. 
is going to be coming out. If Don't you think that's going to be the counter that people are going to say that? Oh, that's because everybody by now do we have a percentage of people, uh, X amount of people now. Are I don't vaccinated. know if it's reached that number yet. There's a lot, but um, the cases were dropping really fast before enough people were getting vaccinated to really make a dent anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but Johnson and Johnson's vaccine is coming out and their vaccine is very interesting because the other two vaccines, what is it? Pfizer and Moderna. Mm -hmm. They require two injections and they require, they need to be stored at like super cold temperatures. So it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass to administer and store and it's very inefficient. Johnson & Johnson's doesn't need to be stored that way and it's only one shot. Now, wasn't it you that was mm -hmm. telling me that this isn't even like a true vaccine? It's like a it's like a, a gene modulator or something like that. Isn't it different than like normal the, the RNA ones? The other two ones yeah. are mRNA vaccines. And now, I, so I heard I heard this, don't know if it's true, haven't confirmed this or not. I'd love to look this up and and see if it's true. But I've seen people saying that they that they called their uh, life insurance companies. Yes, yes. I saw that. And, and the life insurance company- and we, they said, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Yeah, they basically said, if I die from this vaccine, uh, will my spouse get yeah, the life this, insurance money? Does this void my, my uh, life insurance And apparently policy. they said it does void because it's an experimental vaccine. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Do you guys know? And I wonder if then that the Johnson & Johnson one would be different. I think it is. It's not a mRNA right. vaccine. Well, I mean, in terms of the life insurance policy. Yeah. Well, Doug's the life insurance guy, so he would have a better <laughs> guess than any of us. I have no great guess. Yeah, you know, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't about, know. You're about as fucking worth as Justin with these arguments. He hey, just, hey, yeah, you, sorry about that. You fucking, you, why don't you? I have a stance. Yeah, can one of you two take a stance yeah. on something? But here? I will find like, out. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, I, I actually think about things. Yeah, <laughs> like, my bad. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, hey, uh, how about those fights over the weekend? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, I was let down yeah. a little bit though. Why? The, the main fight was a little. Well, uh, Nunez. I mean, it was such. She's a beast. Yeah, Nunez destroyed. That it looked like a mismatch to me, dude. It nobody's like matching up the new. <laughs> yeah, but that, dude, I they mean, can't find anybody. That yeah, exactly. That was like the best contender for her. I mean, some, yeah. that girl has been whooping ass. She's six. She's foot. a big girl. Yeah, I mean, if there was anybody that had a chance at her, I mean, that's she's. There's nobody. Yeah, yeah. and now what was the guy's name that need the dude whose head was down? Yeah, uh, I can't think of who it is right yeah, now. You know I what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. No, it was the third. It was the third main. It was like the there was three. There was three championship fights. Yeah, right? so mm -hmm. that was the the first of the three. And what a bad call. I guess he said it was his corner that told him to do that. He thought it was, but you can. They replayed it and showed it was the corner. So deliberate. Saying, Don't it's hit like, him. I think yeah. he, he hurt. I think he misheard. So, so Justin has a, a theory that I think has legs. <laughs> what? What's he your thinks, theory? He, well, yes. tell him what your theory is. Well, honestly, because of like incidences like that, like it's it's so deliberate, and it happened. Like he was he was. Like it, when they were going through this, like look at the judges scoring. Like he was, he was winning. Obviously, and, and it's like it, to, to do something like that just looks like a thrown fight to me. Mm. Oh, Peter Yan. Yeah, but like I've seen like a lot of these. I mean, it, sometimes you see it as like a, a what do they call that? Like a, a faint like punch or like a like a yeah like a missed punch. And then the guy pretends like oh like yeah. he's all hurt. I mean, I could see that. Like he's oh, winning. Wow, he really knows he's winning. Winning. There might be some money involved. Well, so, I mean, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna it lose. just feel it felt too fishy to me. That's interesting. That is an interesting theory because it was the, so obvious. Well, and the money line on that was like way, way skewed yes. too. Oh yeah, <clears throat> wasn't so he that, like, that's what makes it more. Were like, the odds like five hundred something? Yeah, it was a, it was like it was way skewed. So yeah. that makes that more believable. And if there's a way that you're going to get away with throwing a fight like that, like if he, and he wasn't even like, did you see his reaction after the whole thing? Like he was so aloof about the whole thing. Mm. Like, dude, you just like threw the fight, you dumbass. Like, what what, what did you do that? And for? he's he's Russian, isn't he? Now Peter uh, Yan is he from Russia? Now he? here's the thing that I, where I'll, I'll challenge it. Not that I, I disagree. I think it's an interesting theory, and uh, we're definitely stirring up controversy by saying some shit like that. Um, but what is different about UFC right now, we talked about this while we are at the house, like no crowd, right? So these guys can actually hear yeah. a lot of what their corner is saying. Right. And there's a lot of these guys that are actually, I mean, you could, I've, I've watched several UFC fights where you, I can hear as a, as a spectator, I can hear the corner and then I can see the fighter can to, totally listen to what they're saying and then change whatever he's doing. Right. And what they tried to, or what he claimed was that he thought he heard, he heard hit them him, say hit him. And they yeah. just said, don't hit him. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. And so he just responded to his corner. And so that's also believable to me too, because normally they wouldn't even hear that. It's but, so loud at a fight like that. that but they let me ask hear. you guys a question though. Yeah. Are you, I mean, maybe this is true. Are you that much of a robot when you're fighting that you do what your corner, like, is that part of the training? Well, because I feel like it was so know. obvious. Come the dude's on, knee was down. Well, no, come on, dude. In a fight, dude, it's like a lot of split second, 
moments, right? right? right. And instinct and you So he's just like hit him, go. And then yeah, you exactly. Yeah. You hear knee, knee, and or, or I mean do, it's possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's it, I don't know. It's uh I, I think you have an interesting theory it's on that. It just smelled fishy. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not well, definitive. I thought what was fishy to me, to your point, was how homeboy reacted afterwards because he acted so like so yeah. dazed and well, he so, did get knee in the head. I, he that did. too. He did, but it seemed like it was a little a little yeah, extra. But even you've seen people <laughs> yeah. get knocked out too and then like come to and they're they're like totally coherent and like fine you know yeah. and so to him to still be hurt that was also a little suspect yeah it's like, like i've seen fights like that where a guy gets hit in the nuts and then he's yeah. like oh that's it. i can't fight yeah. but normally they do a no contest but because that looked deliberate well well wow. what was in his benefit for still fighting after that nothing nothing he nothing was, he, he was, had no like there was no like Except for his own sort of, uh, you know, ego. No, uh, going forward. it was Peter Yan was getting very dominant, and his his defense was so solid. I mean, he couldn't break his defense. Yeah, you know. But yeah. it, I I agree with you. I mean, yeah, think about it was, it. He, in, the, in the Russian mob, they had they're, they've got their hands in a lot of things. <laughs> so who knows, man? <laughs> you know what I'm well, saying? you know who was uh, dominant in this fight too was uh, the other guy under Khabib Khabib's training oh, yeah. partner. Oh, yeah. What was he his was, name? I yeah. He, yeah, he was amazing to watch. Incredible. So. Yeah, incredible. His, his wrestling was on yeah. point. All right, I got another study for you guys. So um, you read a lot this weekend. I know. Right? I do. I do sometimes. Right? You're a reader. No, but well, you know what's funny. No. So leaders are readers. Along those not lines, a book reader. You're right. <laughs> along those lines. So in on the on the mind pump true. Instagram page, we did this whole like three uh, truths, one lie. Three truths, one lie. And then the idea was pick the lie, and then you'll I don't remember what it, like win a prize or whatever. Did you ask Chokey how many people got that wrong? I bet a lot of people. Got she that said wrong. most, almost all of them. Yeah. yeah. So I had I had three truths and one lie. The lie for me was. Why don't tell all the tell all the truths first? Tell I don't remember exactly. Oh my god, it was your thing. You don't remember? <laughs> Come on, dude. Didn't you write I it got, down? I got a selective memory. Well, I mean, you're gonna share it on the show. You gotta tell everybody. Not everybody's following on Instagram. All right, dude. I'll pull it up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here, here they are. So here's, here are the statements. Okay, you guys will know which one the lie is, but one of them is I personally sold over a million commissionable dollars at 24 Fitness in two years. Yeah. Uh, another one was I, brag. I was a premier. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> I was a, I was a premier banker with the Series Six and Sixty Three license. I played the trumpet for four years, and then I read a lot of books. Yeah, yeah. and the lie was that I read a lot of books. Yeah, I, I bet don't. you a lot of people pick trumpet. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't know you. Yeah. I actually didn't know you played for four years. Four I knew years. you played it. I didn't know you were four yeah. years. Yeah, I did. Wow. So did you get okay at it? Were you? Um, so would mean, you play us the trumpet? Yeah. Maybe. No, right, dude. I haven't <clears throat> played in so long. The Saints no. go marching in. I want to hear it. No, nah, I yeah. can't do it. No? Nothing. I can't. I can make the sound. That's about it. <laughs> Yeah, do it right now. Yeah, no, with the trumpet. <laughs> oh, come uh, on. But yeah, a lot of people think I read a lot of books, but I don't. I read a lot of articles, <clears throat> studies, and blogs. I don't read a lot of books. In yeah, fact, I, I, I guess that one right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Adam, Adam gets annoyed with me. Because <laughs> I get hella mad. He's always sending me books. Yeah. Sal, talk about this on the podcast. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I want him to read it. So give we me can the talk. cliff notes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, then he, then he sends it over to Jessica. Then he gives me like the short, the, like the cliff note version of it. Yeah. So All right, I just skip him. So study. Here's a study. So um, melatonin production at night, right? It's uh, it's anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant. Um, low melatonin levels uh, reduce growth hormone output. They, it's, it accelerates aging. Uh, melatonin, when you sleep, very important. Um, in fact, uh, even we just talked about COVID earlier, people with good melatonin levels less likely to get infected or with severe symptoms of COVID even. They're showing in some studies. Anyhow, wearing blue light blocking glasses at night increases melatonin production by a whopping 58%. Wow. 58. That's huge. Yes, yes, that's not a small amount. So literally wearing blue light blocking glasses for two hours before you go to bed versus not wearing them and just, you know, looking at your lights and all that stuff, 58% uh, difference in melatonin. I, have, wow. I have to admit that of all the nerdy things that I do now, that is one that I do consistently that I would have, if you would have asked me, you know, seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. as a trainer, yeah. like that, if I would wear, I'd be I scoffing. Oh my God. All I would, day. I would laugh. At I remember that when all of so us were loud. Oh, yeah. No way. Because well, it was so dorky forever. Uh -huh. You know, like I just, it's I probably, I couldn't get into it's it. It's probably still too really dorky. It probably is. <laughs> yeah, it's probably still real, but it works. We, yeah. It works. Some of our friends and still it make fun makes of us a for big it. difference. Yeah. So well, we went, wait, was it? We went to Paleo FX years ago and we're walking around and then there's a bunch of people wearing orange glasses everywhere. Daytime. It was daytime. 
time. They had their kids. Whole wearing families. Yes. Yeah. Oh and what God. it felt like was exactly like when we go to the bodybuilding conventions and you have a bunch of dudes walking around yeah. with stringers. It's like the exact same thing. I know. So it, I remember We're wearing once, their moccasins. I went to, yeah. I don't remember, I think it was the Arnold Classic and it was like in Columbus, it was like snow outside and people are walking in with stringer tanks and stuff like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. It's not even it's Just as outside. pretentious, right? It's yeah. freezing outside. But those, it works, dude. It's one, It's become That's one a of, big percentage, dude. Yeah, and yeah. over time, that makes a big difference. You Look can feel it. You can feel it. If yeah. you And anybody that I know that we've turned on to, to using the, the glasses will DMs me all the time like, wow, I notice a huge difference. And when you where you notice it the most is when you don't. So if you wear them consistently for a while, like it's it's hard because I feel like it's it gets better and better. It's a little subtle, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Even myself, who's paying attention, I feel like at first I wasn't, I didn't really notice it. It's when I I would forget, when I would forget to wear yes. it, and then I could really tell, like, oh shit, that makes a big difference. Well, it's like going back to the whole zoo thing. I think the environmental factors are a lot bigger than people realize. Mm -hmm. You know, just because it may it's so subtle, you know, like you're just exposed to lights, you know, or whatever. You, like it doesn't seem like that big a deal. But if like it depends on the amount and every day and the volume, it exactly. just adds up. Exactly. And along those lines, the uh that one article I brought up earlier about, you know, people getting fatter and whatever. The scientists in there talked about, just along the lines of what you're saying, Justin, the fact that everything is so temperature controlled um, that we burn less calories. Because mm. when we're cold, we mm -hmm. shiver. When we're hot, we our bodies try to adapt. And that process of acclimating to the temperature burns calories. But because we're always in temperature controlled environments... We're not getting. We're not exercising that muscle. Oh, How that speaks to. I was listening to you know John Romano like that interview he did just recently. He's oh, talking yeah. about clenbuterol and just like that being the side effect. Like bodybuilders were attracted to it because of the side effects of it, where it just you just shiver all the time and you yeah. just like burn more calories. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I, know. I was like, wow. I'm like, that's why it works. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Hey, hilarious. back to your your xenoestrogens and 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 that claim to that's why all our animals are fat. Yeah, fat zoo animals. Yeah. What are for humans? What are the biggest rocks in that area, right? Like, is it microwaving your food in plastic? Is it drinking drinks out of plastic? Is it the hair and, and face products? Like, there's so many things that carry that. What are like the, and, and I'm somebody, let's say I'm somebody who definitely every time Sal does a study, I'm, I go out and try whatever he's saying or, or get better at my, mm -hmm. my daily habits. What are the areas that you would tell somebody like, maybe check these boxes? For plastic you? containers is one of the bigger ones mm -hmm. for sure. Storing your food in plastic containers. Uh, drinking water all the time. In, out yep. Of plastic in the containers. cold or the heat <clears throat> over time. Do you that's, think that's what's made the, the rise of like brands like mirror and stuff like that with the, 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 that's got to help, right? You think that's why the awareness, because I feel like those have exploded. Like those water bottles and things yeah. like that. Like that wasn't a big deal when we were like when we first started in fitness. Mm -hmm. Not everybody carried those insulated water bottles. Is no, it was that more like plastic, like protein shakers. Totally, that was the yeah. thing. Hundred percent. Yeah, I think so. Also, I think uh, the I think people are more environmentally conscious. So I don't know about you guys, but I used to buy big packs of bottled water and whatever, and that's what I would drink my water. Yep. And then you just start to realize, like, holy shit, I'm throwing away hella plastic bottles all the time. Yeah, it's just wasteful. Wasteful. So, so then I got, you know, a water purifier, and then I put water in a, you know, insulated, you know, container, like a mirror cup yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Keep it cold all day. Keep it cold all day. It's not plastic. Yeah. So it's not being stored in plastic, and you're not getting those xenorestrogens. Yeah, because I remember reading somewhere, it's already bad enough to drink out of that. It's really bad if, like, you leave it in your car, and then the sun, like, heats it up, yes. right? Isn't that, like... The or cold. Mm -hmm. Oh, cold will yeah. do, too. Any... any, any any extreme temperature wow, will so cause if, the plastic if, to leach oh, into know, the cold. I didn't know yeah. that. So yeah. if you put like it, because what's really common, you go to like any kid's soccer field or what that, like a cooler full yeah, of these. Throw in the ice. Yeah, you throw those water bottles in the ice. Mm -hmm. Really? Now it's over time. It, it gets worse and worse. So mm -hmm. if you freeze it and then you, you, know, you get it out after you know a month or whatever. But yeah, all, and even if you just leave it in, even if it's at normal temperature over time some of that leaches in some of that's going to be in the water oh interesting and then the second big offender and oh you know what's a big one too hmm. um the waxy coating on like receipts, receipts. yes i remember that. that's a big one huge like the, Ma max not, talks about i that remember time. max talking i didn't know it was a big one not big as in like you're like you're getting most of your xenoestrogens i'm so glad i, I never just a lot of residue i always, you I always tell him no 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 keep the receipt yeah, no what he's saying is and i looked into this is there's a lot just on one receipt Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of exposure just from touching that waxy material on the receipt. I always never get a receipt, by the way. Yeah. I don't know why. Anywhere, Are there areas anymore. that you guys would would admit that you're good at and that you're bad at in that? With the, with the, the Xeno, Yeah, yeah. 
because there's got to be area. I mean, we're, none of us are perfect. Let's be honest. No, I don't even pay that much attention. To right, it took it took me a, it took me a long time. Matter of fact, thanks to Doug. Right, Doug Doug saw this, especially when I was competing. I was notorious for microwaving shit in, my, in yep. plastic, yep. Mm -hmm. and and not getting. The, and I remember Doug buying me all the glass jars, trying to save my life. He's like, "We need you around in five or ten years." Yeah. This thing does. Jeez, it's, it's, that extreme. <laughs> yeah, this business goes anywhere, so he might have saved my life. So that was an area that I was really, really bad at. Is there are there things like I don't use? Obviously, I don't use hair products. You know, so that's, <laughs> I'm not getting a lot no, of chemical. Just, not, you know, for nostalgia. That, yeah, yeah. It's not, that's a that's a high one too, right? Like just like, lotions, like beauty. Oh, lotions. Of course. Like my, my Jergens is like yeah. hurt me. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, dude. I all, all the lotions. There's uh, got to be some good lotions then, right? Oh, no? how about this? Uh, the, the, like the, the fabric softeners mm -hmm. that you, that you'll put on your clothes so what? that they're, so that they're soft afterwards. That. Yeah. Those, I like that smell. Those will have some good. Dude, <laughs> I wonder too, but cause I was used to wear like my Apple watch all the time and like Fitbit and all that. But then I started to get this like skin reaction to it and I could only go for so long before I would get irritated by it. Like, mm. I, I don't know what kind of like chemicals. That's your that. STD I think it's just, flaring up. Yeah. That's, not, that's not from your Apple watch. <laughs> it's just your, your wrist <laughs> Herpes should have got yeah, that checked out. <laughs> yeah, out just seasonal, you know, seasonal flare-ups. First question is from Jaina Roller Fit. Can you actually reset your body's set point? I used to be 310 pounds. I got down to 155 pounds, but never can stay there long. My body keeps rebounding and staying at 195. I've been lifting for five years and tracking macros to lose weight. I would like to my body to sit at 145 to 160 pounds. How can I reset my set point? You know, I never, I, uh, 10 years in personal training, I don't think I even heard someone talk about set point. Mm -hmm. That was not like a common, is it like getting marketed like crazy? That's what it in is. The last, it has to be. Because I, I feel like we've we've addressed this multiple times in the show. That and net carbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that that is two. that is definitely one that's yeah. new for sure. No, I feel for her. So I feel for this person because uh, or her. I think it's a her, but uh, for them because this is uh, this can definitely be challenging. But here's the deal: set point, the body set point, uh, definitely has been used by marketers to make you to sell you products. What they'll say is, you it's your set point, your body's natural physiology is making you this overweight, try our product or our process to change your set point as if you would have this new normal. And now no matter what you do, you can't gain weight because you have this new set point. Okay, so here's the truth. The 99%, there's definitely some physiological stuff that happens. We'll get to that in a second. But 99% of a set point is behavior, okay? Mm -hmm. When you have behaviors that have caused you to weigh 310 pounds at some point, which did not happen overnight, right? It takes a long time. It's a slow process of weight gain, oftentimes starting it as a child, right? Oftentimes, someone who's 310 pounds as an adult probably dealt with weight issues uh, as a child. These are hard set psychological behaviors and attachments to food or food relationship issues. And that's very hard to change. Just because you lose weight doesn't mean you change those hard set behaviors and coping mechanisms. Yeah, many times you've just mm -hmm. been really disciplined for an extended period of time. You you've just, you've you done just, it just through sheer will. Exactly. Yeah. Sheer discipline. I mean, you see this at the, the highest level in competing. I mean, uh, you'd be surprised how many of these kids that are getting up on stage and competing – have all kinds of eating issues, just like these 310 pound people, but just different, you know, but they've been able to get on stage, present their physiques because through sheer will, will they can discipline themselves for a year straight of eating like regimen. Hey, this is a look at, I'll tell you what, statistically speaking, there's a significant percentage of people who get gastric bypass surgery, who gain the weight back. Mm -hmm. Now consider gastric bypass is about as extreme as it gets in terms of setting up blocks, preventing you from gaining weight. They literally bypass your stomach so that you don't have one, essentially, making it almost impossible to overeat, and yet a significant portion of people force themselves to gain weight. I actually worked with someone like this. I couldn't believe that this actually happened. So the set point is a behavior one. So here's my advice to, to this person asking this question. If you want to change your set point, Work with a therapist. Work with someone who's going to work with your behaviors. That's where the issue lies. It's not some issue with your body that it wants to be at a particular weight. Because if I if if we locked you in a laboratory mm -hmm. and fed you the same amount and kept you certain period of active or whatever, your body would weigh whatever we'd want it uh, mm -hmm. to weigh. So 
Well, also, I think it's important to acknowledge like where homeostasis is, like where la- that maintenance is, where your body's most comfortable, based off of like behaviors, based off the way you're, uh, you know, training, you're eating, all these things, uh, to then uh, stretch yourself and and push yourself uh, to sort of uh, get at, into a different category, into a different level. Uh, you you know, like like you mentioned, a lot of it's behavioral driven. Uh, this isn't like a genetic limitation, uh, which is kind of like what this implies there's something metabolically going on here though too that we have to address that's very common right somebody who's 310 pounds drops all the way down to the 150 range the amount of calorie reduction and movement and cardio and training this pro- this person probably did to get to that point was a lot i bet probably and a lot of times it wasn't it was done and with the intentions of how fast can I get this off my body versus what is the smartest fa- the smartest way for me to right, get this Right, because we don't know what she did. Or right, exactly. Did, right? Yeah. And many times what happens is the person who was this heavy got all the way down to 155 by doing things like eating 900 to 1,200 calories a day, doing cardio, weight training, staying super active to get that point. And then what ends up happening when they reach that 155, let's say that was their target, they go, whew, okay, I'm going to relax a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they're like, en- enough of those crazy three-hour hikes or I'm not going to be taking that high-intensity cardio class all the time yeah. or I'm going to every once in a while enjoy myself because I'm down this way. And then what happens is the weight comes back on so rapidly because their body had adapted to eating so low of calories mm-hmm. and moving so much that it's just not realistic to maintain that the rest of their life. And so when they just try mm-hmm. and be somewhat normal, and that doesn't mean like they don't, I, and I'm not saying this person goes from, discipline and eating hardly anything and exercising like crazy to all of a sudden like, oh, fuck it. And that's what gains them back. No, you don't have to. Literally, when you've slowed your metabolism down to 900 to 1200 calories a day with intensive training all the time, it doesn't take much for that weight to start piling on. Make a couple bad choices a week and it it comes on rapidly. Yeah. You see this when, when it's really fast, you know, it's like everything is all cylinders and going a hundred percent. And this is what we caution a lot with our clients coming that want to lose a lot of weight is to really consider that, uh, you know, you're going to be, uh, dramatically dropping calories. It's not sustainable. So to, to, to kind of like slowly edge your way down and build muscle at the same time is a better approach. Yeah. Now I will say this, I'd like to add this as well, um, to this person is also be kind to yourself. Uh, your body's sitting at 195. That's still a big. That's all. That's over a hundred pounds lower than where it used to sit before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've gone a long way, and you're still kicking ass. And so be okay with that. Be you know accept the fact that you've gone a long distance. Be you know have some gratitude, or, or I should say, be proud of that. And it's a slow process. It takes a long time, longer than people realize. the The weight keeping the weight off. For, for forever part takes a lot longer than getting it off. Well, it takes, you also got to reframe your goal. Like, so a lot of times when the goal is, when you're at 310 and you you just want to get the fat off. You yeah, just want to yeah. get, you want to lose weight. Once you weight, make that decision, lose, right? the overall yeah, weight. you just want to lose weight, right? You want to get down, you want to get down, but you, you really should be focused on building muscle, right. which means actually increasing calories and protein and strength training, reduction probably of all the high intensity and cardio. And I'm making a lot of assumptions right now, but yeah. this is speaking from experience. Normally the client that you get like in this situation, mm-hmm. they cut calories like crazy and they picked up activity. They, do, sig- they just do tons of cardio. Tons, significantly mm-hmm. to get to that point. And then they, they're in this. And this is why we see Biggest Loser people always pile the weight back on. Yeah. And the only ones that you see keep it off for an extended period of time, hire a personal trainer to like hammer them every day. Mm-hmm. You, you, there is a small percentage of Biggest Losers, if you guys don't know, that actually maintain. That's like and 15%. Like it's, yeah, super, it's super low. And out of those, almost all of them, have, like in enroll in something or have a yeah. trainer or coach that they hire to just keep pushing them and keep burning the and mo- keep burning. The most success I ever had with clients like this were when they worked with me. So I was the trainer and then they also had a therapist yeah. uh, and they worked with the therapist. Mm-hmm. It was always the most successful formula by far. Me by myself, I could do pretty well, especially towards the end of my career because I, I got experience, but it, it just, it wasn't as good. When they had a therapist working on those behavioral issues, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and then they train with me on top of it two days a week or three days a week, a tremendous success. And there's a couple people that I still keep in contact with who lost well over 100 pounds who've kept it off years and years later, um, and they still are working with the therapist. They still meet with the therapist once a month or once every other week. Next question is from the Notorious Abe. 
when do you implement drop sets and supersets in your workouts? Okay, so uh, drop sets and supersets. First off, a drop set, just to, people don't know, is when you'll do X amount of reps with a certain weight, and then when you can't do any more good reps, you drop the weight, and then you move to a weight that's a little bit lighter and keep going. So an example would be, I'm doing curls with 30-pound dumbbells. I do 10 reps. I can't do any more. Put the 30s down. Grab the 25. Squeeze out four more reps. And I keep going uh, as long as you want, right? You can drop down to you know three times, four times, or whatever. Superset is when you combine two exercises without any rest. Now, make no mistake, these are both high-intensity techniques. Um, so they should be used judiciously. Yeah, intermittently. Um, intermittently. And like any style of training... You're better off doing it for three, four weeks and then moving into something else because mm -hmm. when you first do drop sets or you first do supersets, you're going to get an incredible pump. You might even get some some muscle building, but that effect uh, will wear off quite quickly and then you need to switch to something else. I, I, I love tackling this one because this is I, we get this a lot. And here's what I find that none of the studies that support like all the all the benefits of, of supersetting and drop setting don't talk about the real value of it is it's great for a time crunch. Oh, You're yeah, increasing yeah. intensity and shortening the amount of time that you need to do that volume. That's when I do them. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how I do I just did this last week with us, right? So we've been training in the in the gym every morning together. Uh, the other morning um, I had, I was working, right now I'm doing a split where chest and back are, are one of my workout days, which chest and back, big muscles, easily takes me an hour uh, to get through all the stuff that I want to do. Um, I was actually on my Instagram and emailing and I was responding. So I, I was sitting on the couch for the first 20 minutes while these guys were working out. And real and then real quickly, the time went by. I knew we had to start to record and I didn't want to miss my chest and back day. And so this was my workout. I instantly went to super setting, drop setting, and I had this 20, 30, and I was sore as shit the next day mm -hmm, because yeah. I don't utilize that tool all the time. And I, to me, this is where I find the most value in it because that doesn't happen. It's, it's not every day. It's actually not even every week or month where you might catch me sitting down during a workout time, messing on my phone for 20 to 30 minutes. But when those times do come, I don't freak out and go like, oh my God, I can't work out or I just ride it off and right. say, oh, I'm not going to do it. Hey, I still got 20, 30 minutes. I haven't done any supersets and drop sets in a while. Mm -hmm. I'm going to knock this workout in in 20, 30 minutes and still get a great workout in. That's yeah, how I, I just you know. throw them in for fun. You right. know, it's one of those things that's like, um, th there's a couple techniques. They're a little more advanced. They're a little more crazy. These, these are those that, that, that fit right in where you, you want to like blow up your muscles. You want to get that crazy pump, but it's not something that I'm like constantly going to, you know, in terms of like my programming. No, supersets and drop sets are not in the same category a straight set. So that's just a hundred percent, but it is a wonderful tool. And mainly it's to get a really, really good pump. That's what I get. From totally me. abused in the bodybuilding community. Yes. And it's what I used to see all the time with my peers. Like they love to suit because it, it's a, it's an instant gratification thing. Yeah. You leave yeah. the gym, you look. Yes. Man. To Justin's point, you get this sick pump, you know, which is great. And the, the adaptations from that sick pump are great, but really only great for those f first four to six weeks of messing with it. After you've done that for a while, the adaptations that you get from your body's pretty adapted to it. So you're not getting a ton of benefits if you're doing this consistently. You'll get way more benefits if you intermittently inject it into your workouts every now and then. And I think the best way to do it personally is the times when you don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Dan Cohen Solal. Is it healthy to have a protein shake every day? Any long-term health issues with that? Yeah, this. So I'll tell you guys a story. This reminds me. So I have, uh, you know, I have a lot of cousins, and we're all right around the same age. We all grew up together, and I've always been into working out. So they would always ask me questions about that. And I remember one of my cousins was trying to lose weight, and he, you know, and because he'd asked me questions so many times, I think he was like, "I'm not going to ask Sal. I'm going to do some stuff and then see what I can do." Right? Anyway, he comes to me, and he's like, "Dude, Sal, I'm I'm gaining uh, body fat. I'm trying to get lean." But I keep gaining body fat. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm like, well, let's let's talk about your diet or whatever. And he's like, yeah. So I'm eating this, that, and the other. And he goes, and it doesn't make any sense. I take a I take two shakes every day, and I'm still getting fatter. I'm like, well, it's, it's all extra calories, dude. <laughs> yes, calories. So, so my point with the story is that uh, are protein shakes okay every day? It really depends. Mm -hmm. Are if it's throwing your calories over, then you're going to gain body fat. Um, is it helping you hit your protein requirements and your calories are good? Then it's going to be great for you. Protein shakes are a tool. They can be used in ways that are good, and they can be used in ways uh, that are not so good. 
Um, it all depends on your diet. It depends yeah. on your goals. And the quality of the protein. That's uh, another powder too. Yeah, it's like, it, it's interesting because like the common knowledge is that protein shakes or bars are health foods. Uh, it, you know, and like we've talked about this and like a lot of them are like super processed and, you know, have a lot of different sugars and sugar alcohols that they put in them. And so it's, you know, not all of them are equal. And, and also like nothing's going to beat just whole foods. And so this is why we stress that first and foremost. And then if, you know, your protein levels aren't where they should be, like this is where we introduce that to complement it. But it's complementary. It's not like a main food group. Yeah, I feel like this is very similar to this, the super set question right before this. I feel like I, my goal is to always get all my foods through whole or all my calories through whole foods. The reality is that doesn't happen a lot of times. And when I have to, or when I'm low, I always do my shakes after at the end of the day. That's just always how I eat it. It's like, I look back at my day and I go, and that helps you dictate how much. Yeah. And that's, that's dictates if I'm going to take it or not. I go through my head and I go, and, and here's the thing. If I, like, let's say my, my protein intake for me is about 200 grams, right? If I land at like 170, I'm actually still not taking a shake. You know where I'm taking a shake? is, the, And this happens when I have like 70 grams of protein for the day. You know, there's a day, there's easily a day where two of the meals were good-sized protein meals for me, but then maybe the other one or two were very carb-heavy and I didn't get hardly any or no protein in it whatsoever. And I'm sitting at the end of my night right now going, okay... What do you do? What do you want, Mozzie? He doesn't like your what do you, answer. What do you want? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the end of the night. What's he mad at? What's the hell about? He's the, he's the lie detector <laughs> dog. He's like, I don't know, Adam. You be taking <laughs> shakes. He's like, all day been, long. You drink a lot of shakes. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, that all about, guy? Yeah. Bad dream or what? Huh? <laughs> out of nowhere. What you what went out there, Doug? Was there someone out there? I didn't see anything. Oh, he just went all pissed yeah. off right there. No, so I, I'm using it if and only if. I'm not getting adequate protein, but and my goal is always to try and do it through whole foods. So, and if I catch myself, which happens, using a protein shake every single day for a few weeks in a row, that's kind of like I have, you know, the come to Jesus talk with myself and go like, okay, I could be better about making, you know, preparing my foods and making better choices so I don't have to use this all the time. Next question is from Matthew Lemming. What are your current thoughts on CrossFit? Uh, so as a sport, it's awesome. Love to watch it. As a workout modality, it sucks. Uh, it still sucks. CrossFit's uh, approach to training. Now, they've done some amazing things. They've brought some great things to the fitness they've space. They've done a ton of They've done a ton of stuff. Uh, a to ton yeah. of great things for the fitness space. Uh, they got people squatting and deadlifting and doing all the best exercises. They got barbells to be cool, uh, especially with women. CrossFit did that almost single-handedly. But the programming that they employ, unless you're going to compete in the sport of CrossFit, um, isn't very great. Um, mm -hmm. You know, case in point, right? Uh, Olympic lifts in a fatigue-based circuit. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, very yes. complex exercise where they're safe, but there's a razor-thin line between safe and dangerous. Your form goes off a little bit. It's very dangerous. And one of the last things you ever do with exercise like that is do them to fatigue or for time um, in a circuit-based type of, of a workout. Um, so for, for those reasons, the programming, I mean, I think back to all the clients I've trained, and unless they wanted to compete in CrossFit, would I recommend any of them go work out with mm -hmm. that CrossFit modality? No, no I wouldn't. Not no. at all. Yeah, I mean, it, you got to really evaluate the quality of some of the – uh, types of exercises they promote and, and, you know, what kind of environment it is like there's, there's the environment is to, to be able to get you through as many reps as possible, like AMRAP and all these types of acronyms and things that, you know, you attribute to CrossFit. It's, it's really about like trying to make things as competitive as possible. So you have regular pull-ups turn into kipping pull-ups where you're just like getting through this type of, uh, you know, momentum where mm -hmm. I could just, I could just swing my way through this and you, you have to evaluate what, you know, the long-term damage that's going to do to your joints. And it, it's just like, it's, it's appealing to athletes. And so this is why I came out as, as with a, such a hard stance initially in the beginning, because there's a lot of appeal to that type of mentality coming into that environment. Yeah. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to get after it. Uh, everybody in here is, you know, like, uh, you know, we're all suffering together. Like it, it's, it's the environment of suffrage. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of appeal there. That's what's being promoted in marketing. But there's they're just not exposed to 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 real training concepts and core values where you get better. You progress. Uh, you go through these things like there's a there's a limitation to that. And there's also an injury on the other side of what a lot of the programming presents. 
I, I'm going to be very clear on who I'm talking to and who I'm not talking to. So it, if I'm talking to somebody who is pretty young, pretty fit, athletic background, pretty mobile, loves the community, um, it's made them more consistent than they've ever been in their life. They've watched their squat and deadlift progress. They don't have any aches or pains and they, they love it. They love, they love training this way. Like that's, I'm not talking to you. You're a very small percentage. I I'm talking to the first question that we just had, right? We just had somebody which is actually more like the people I'm used to training, which is somebody who is trying to lose a bunch of weight and is struggling to get to their, you know, or figure out their quote unquote set point and get to a place where they can maintain a weight and feel happy about where they're at. This is most people that we train most of our life. And a super intense competitive environment of training is one of the worst things that that person can be in. Because that person is, it's not, it's already, it's already tough for that person to get fit and to get in shape. That is not sustainable for most people. And Justin's right. It appeals to that athletic mindset, my ex-athletes. But if you are trying to make change to your body and you want, whether that be losing body fat or building muscle, you want to make aesthetic change. It's just, it's not an ideal modality and it's definitely not. And maybe it is to get some people there, right? They, they see quick results because of how high intensity it is. You're doing all these great compound lifts and you have the community and the support. And so they think that this is a really good modality that they should stay in. The reality is it's, it's really tough to train that way for a long period of time. I see some, even of our friends that are big CrossFit names, like the Jason Kalipas and stuff. And I, I watch like their Instagram, my buddy, Neil Maddox, like, and man, I go, God, I would, I would hate here. I'm approaching 40 right now that my workouts always would look like that. I just, I have no desire to train that way. It's just, it's, it's a lot. And it's a lot for a guy who likes fitness. I love fitness. I love to, I love to challenge myself. I love training. And I know how much that's just a lot to try and get up and train that way all the time. And so if it's that way for me, I know it's that way for many of my clients that were trying to lose a hundred pounds or just want to feel good. And so this this whole craze around CrossFit, I, I mean, we predicted it four or five years ago to watch it start to die. And we've been watching it die off for the last two years. You don't hear nowhere well, near what you used to hear they about They said it. current thoughts. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't even know what that community looks like anymore. I know there was a big shift uh, towards like elderly community and like kind of changing and re restructuring a lot of the programming to be more health conscious. And like, it, it's interesting the, to see what's happening. The truth is it's getting a lot better. Yeah. It's getting a lot better. So I have less problems with, but the reality of why it's getting a lot better is because it's getting more like real training. Yeah. Right? So it's moving away. Yeah. From so it's not really CrossFit trying anymore. Trying to appeal to act, like a actual average people. Because the, the arguments I get into with people about this after, because of course this will piss a bunch of people off that want to fucking stir shit up with us. So bring it. Okay. The conversation <laughs> Conversation I always get is, oh well, at my box we do this and we do that. Okay, motherfucker, that's training. Yeah. Okay, that's no longer CrossFit anymore. CrossFit like you're is not a, under that umbrella anymore. Right. It's and that's what what's happening. The reason why it's still surviving is because they've had to pivot away from what it started. I mean, it started off with a clown throwing up. Yeah. You know that was that was where we were trying to get everybody to push like that. That's ridiculous. On dialysis. And it's staying around because it has changed and more so much. But then it's just starting to look more and more like real personal training. Mm -hmm. So it's like. It's not really CrossFit anymore. So if you are here to argue with me that it's great or your box that you train, well, you probably have a good trainer yeah. that works there and realizes him or herself. They're that, doing functional training. Yeah, and they're is, trying to help you. I yeah. get it. Smart. Agreed. Agreed. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so you can come find us on YouTube if you want. Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I'm working inward, first of all. Like I'm thinking of all the things that I haven't been addressing. I'm not worried about the strength training, the aesthetics. It's not that at all. And I'm already kind of thinking about when I come out of this, the things that I'll need to start to do right away. Like how will I reintroduce calories? How will I know how much should I reintroduce? Mm -hmm. I'm already thinking.